What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to Aram for once again coming through, showing love to the channel via the PayPal. I saw your comments along with the donation. Um, and yeah, that's no problem. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely no problem. I remember you requesting that before. But I had forgot the actual player. But thank you for reminding me. And I'll probably do that today. All right. And once again, thank you for showing love to this channel. I want to thank everybody that has shown love to this channel. A lot of you guys have been showing love as of late. And um, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, man. You know, anybody else wants to, who wants to show love, you can do so in the links in the description box below. And I also have a Patreon. Uh, where I'm able to talk about things I can't talk about on YouTube. And it's only $2 per month over on the Patreon. And I take video requests on both forms. Um, and I also have a music channel on YouTube that I'll put a link to uh, in this video as well. So let's get to this so-called game, man. Um... <laughs> Um, look, this is what, uh, I, look, I'm, I'm realistic. Okay. Coming into this series, I thought the Bucks had a shot. Okay. I thought they had a shot. I knew that they would have to play at a very high level offensively. to beat the Nets. But my thinking was the Bucks should be the superior defensive team. They're going to have to try to control the pace of the game and to slow down Brooklyn somewhat, okay? Slow them down somewhat and Make perimeter, make perimeter shots, but Giannis would have to be dominant in this series. Like, in my opinion, I thought Giannis would have to average something like 30 and 13, 29 and 12, preferably 30 and 13 or up. I thought he'd have to be very dominant. I thought Chris Milton would have to shoot, you know, something around 40% from downtown. Drew Holiday would have to average close to 20, 18 or something. I thought the role players have to step up, and I thought we would have a shot at beating the Nets. Unfortunately, not only are the Nets embarrassing Milwaukee offensively, but the Nets, if you watch the first two games, appear to be the better defensive team. What the fuck is going on? Game one was very disappointing. Very disappointing. The Nets led for most of the way. I thought Milwaukee had a shot at winning that game, but they just missed so many wide-open jumpers, uh, especially one Chris Middleton who missed 17 out of 23 shots. Even though I had someone tell me he's the most consistent guy on the team, yeah, Chris Milton, man, this guy's really stepped up. He's really stepped up. I know him. I've been watching this dude for years. Okay, regular season, I don't give a fuck about that. Prove to me when it matters that you can knock down shots. Chris Middleton. Oh, yeah, he had a little stretch where he made some shots down the down, you know, down the line this game. When it, the game was fucking over, when the game was over, and they were down by 35 or 40, yeah, he'll make five shots in a row then. But make them when it matters. Chris Middleton against marquee teams in the playoffs, he does it every fucking year. Look at the numbers. Against the Raptors, against the Heat last year, and so far against the Nets. He sucks.
But what this really proves is that Chris Mills is not a real number two. He's not. He's shooting 13 of 46 so far in the first two games. And um, I, I honestly have to say, watching him, as, as fucked up as this sounds, I'm not surprised. Because I expect failure from him. I expect failure from him. I was shocked and quite frankly flummoxed when the Bucks let Malcolm Brogdon go and, and paid Chris Middleton this exorbitant amount of money. I didn't understand it. And the Bucks right now are paying for that shit. Game two wasn't wasn't even a fucking game to me, man. It was like watching, you know, the, the 96 Bulls or somebody beat up on a varsity team. It, it was ridiculous. Final score 125 to 86. To score 86 points in today's era of basketball, where there's so many rules to help the offense, to score 86 points is kind of to me like the equivalency of scoring 50 points 20 years ago. It's an embarrassment. It's an utter embarrassment. The Bucks were down by as much as 49 points. 49 points. 49 fucking points. 49 points. 49 points! It is not just Chris Middleton, okay? The buck, pardon the pun, the buck stops. The buck starts and stops with with uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Okay, now Giannis, ever since two thousand and old sixteen, maybe it's been a minute. I've been singing your praises, man. I've been watching you in Milwaukee before people even took notice of you, and I saw how good you were. Okay, um. You're a tremendous player. And you do have limitations. Okay? You're not a good shooter. You're not a particularly great a particularly great foul shooter. And I understand that we're in a shooter's league. I get all of that. But great players are supposed to rise to the occasion and Giannis You're not rising to the occasion, okay? I think Charles Barkley is 100% correct when he says that partially one of the reasons why Giannis is selling for jumpers and one of the reasons why he's not being aggressive is because he doesn't want to get to the foul line. He doesn't want any parts of shooting free throws. And if this is Giannis' mental makeup and that he's settling for shots and settling for only 18 and 10 when he's supposed to be putting up 38 and and 10 at least. Um, Giannis, I'm going to have to reassess how I look at you, bro. Um, I get that to win a championship, you need another all-star in today's climate. You just do. Okay? Um, for the most part, the days of guys like Elijah Wan and, you know, Rick Barry and, you know, some of these other guys winning championships with a bunch of good role players, one borderline all-star. Um, I I don't think you can do that in today's NBA, um, because the, the decks are too stacked. You know what I'm saying? 
for one particular team. You have to have another all-star. Not that I think the NBA is more talented. I just think that the good teams or the great teams are stacked so much or going to be stacked so much. Because believe you me, the Lakers are going to be stacked. You know what I'm saying? Like I hops next year. Is it fair? Fuck no. But it is what it is. Um, it's embarrassing that Mike Budenholzer is being outcoached by Steve Nash. He's been outcoached by a guy who's a great player but never had coached in his life. Mike Budenholzer, who's supposed to be this great fucking coach. But if you watch Mike Budenholzer, he makes terrible fucking decisions during the game. Um, the Nets could be up by, a, let's say, 10 or 11, right? And you get this impression that, you know, the Bucks are in danger of being blown out. And that, you know, the momentum is now on their side. Instead of him calling a timeout or something, calming the team down, he won't do that. But then he'll do something like take Giannis out or take Drew Holiday out, right? You take out your strongest players. They're not in foul trouble. You leave bubblehead Chris Milton in, who might be 0 for 8 at that point. And then you put in role players, these guys who somehow, you know, left their jump shots in Milwaukee. And then all of a sudden, the Nets smell blood because Durant and Irving and all those guys are still in. And all of a sudden, what was a 10-point deficit turns into a 25-point deficit in the blink of a fucking eye. Then he wants to put Giannis and them back in down by 25. And now they have the Herculean and impossible task of trying to come back from a 25-point deficit when no one's knocking down shots. And Budenholzer, Budenholzer, why is Giannis on the perimeter so much? Why is he yakking up threes? Why was why are you force feeding Chris Milton so much, knowing that he's a fucking choke artist? Why are we? Why are the Bucks taking such bad shots? Why are these guys coming up the court and just taking a shot? Whereas with the Nets, they're swing, swing, swing. They're like like the fucking Warriors. They're basically the East Coast fucking Warriors. They swing the ball, swing the ball, swing the ball, swing the ball, swing the ball. Joe Harris wide open for three. Yes. Swing the ball, swing the ball, swing the ball, swing the ball. Uh, Kevin Durant's wide open for three. But then again, KD can create his own shot. Any fucking time. KD, who's fucking seven feet tall, is being guarded by someone who's probably half a foot shorter than him. You know, I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Mike Boone holding to be fucking fired. He's a horrible fucking coach. Horrible. <sighs> He's one of these coaches who's real good during the regular season based on the strength of his roster. But when it comes to the playoffs and when you got to play chess, and you got to figure out certain maneuvers and, and, and moves to counter, counter move what the other coach is doing, the other team. And he, I don't think he, he's not good at that. I really think that this, is, this guy's not, he's not good at that. I've watched him enough to see him getting out coached constantly, whether it's Nick Nurse or whether it's, uh, 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 what's his name in Miami? Um, Eric Spolstra or now it's so far the first two games Steve Nash but the thing about it with the Bucks, man they don't have the confidence man and, and if you don't have the confidence you're not going to win a game man 
the Bucks need some to do some serious soul searching in the next couple of days. Because they, if they come out the same way, I'm honestly starting to think that they don't b- believe they can beat this team. Everything is telling me this. And as a, as a, you know, even though the Chicago Bulls are my team, they haven't been in the playoffs for so fucking long. I got to root for somebody in the playoffs. So I've been rooting for the Bucks. you know. I was rooting for the Wizards, too, but they, they eliminated. So I'm rooting for the Bucks. And um, I just get the impression that the Bucks, I think they're on the verge of quitting, man. And this is where Giannis has to step up as a leader. Giannis has to step up as a leader and at least give the impression of hope. Can the Bucs come back and win this series? Mathematically, it's possible, yes. The Bucs can win four straight games, I guess, in theory. Is it likely? Well, probably not. But the Bucs got to look at it one day at a time, one game at a time, man. Um, but they, they, they really, I think after this season, if the Bucks are eliminated, they need to make some serious changes, man. And I think the Bucks need to make a serious push toward acquiring a superstar because Chris Middleton is not enough. They need a superstar, not just another good player. They need a superstar. Or if not, they can kiss goodbye them to Giannis Antetokounmpo in a couple of years. Because the pressure for him to win, I think, is going to be too great. They're already about to pile on him. You know, I think it's Chris Milton. I think it's the coach. But, you know, they all, all the media is going to blame Giannis. And to an extent, rightfully so. To an extent. But it's everybody, man. It's Giannis. It's Chris Middleton. It's the coaching. It's the schemes. It's the it's the effort. It's the role players. It's everything. Everything. The effort just sucks. And the coup de gras was Blake Griffin dunking on Giannis. I mean, I think all Giannis haters, I really seriously think that when Blake Griffin dunked on Giannis, all Giannis haters collectively, I think they bust a little bit of a nut when they saw that. Yeah, I, I do. So, um, I don't know, man. Game three is going to have to be drastically different for me to change my thinking process right now because I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to be close. I don't know. I, I the, the the Bucks have to make a stand in Game Three because right now the Nets have no respect for Milwaukee. None. And by extension, that means they have no respect for Giannis Antetokounmpo. And Giannis needs to step up, man. Straight up. It's on Giannis. I know I, I talk about Chris Milton, but it's on Giannis right now. He's the leader of that team. So tell me what you guys think.